Hello and welcome to Trains and Vietic. In this episode I'll be talking about reverse loops. This is something which is quite common in modern railways, both analog and digital, but it's be becoming a lot more common in digital layouts as there's simple solutions to it. So I'm going to run through the common types of ARM reverse loops and describe the solutions. The diagram in front of you is a diagram of a basic reverse loop. You have a track coming in and going out. I'll demonstrate what the problem is here. So I'll mark the outside of the track green. So that's okay there. But when it comes back to the other side, you'll be conflicting. So for the other side of the track, I'll do as blue. And you can see that for the two sides are causing problems, as that should be coming out as a green just there, and that should be coming out as a blue. But to resolve this, it's quite easy, especially in this case. What you do, you put isolator joints just there and just there. Then this is fed from your normal DCC system. Depending on what type of system you're using, depend on how you would get around this. But the common solution is a reversing module, which detects a short circuit and will change the polarity, so that would drop from green to blue and vice versa. So you'd never actually get a short circuit. The other option with this type is to use a switch on your points so that uh, when it's thrown so that it goes that way, it's one polarity, then when it's thrown the other, it will change over. So you you would have your feed for all these options, you'd have your standard DCC feed in there. Then you would have uh, if you're using for reverse modules, you'd have a reverse module there. Different systems need different reverse model modules. So first would get tapped off a trap feed. You have your um, isolator section on both tracks, and this will feed that. This is normally a four-wire device, so you have two feeds and two outputs, and you can, and as the loco is detected and the short circuit is detected, it will trip. But you've got to make sure that this piece of track, which the reverse loop is connected to, um, is longer than your longest train you have in there. This is called a Y junction. So first of all, I'll mark the blues. So that is a main track. That's coming off that side. But this is where we start to have problems on this line. So I add for green feeds. Again, along there and up there. So by doing this you can straight away see whereabouts you need to put your isolation. Just here and just here. As if you do your green and reds again, that green will take to that so that's a short circuit. And again the blue will come across there and again a short circuit. The other way to do this one as you can isolate one track or you can isolate both tracks, lose that section so if a train come in and then go out again this can be done with a reverse module or a switch on the point. Okay on this diagram I have uh, already marked the isolation section for outer and inner. 
So you would have your track feed, then you have your feed to your reverse module. This one will only work with a reverse module, as you have two points, but if we're trying to use a point to change the polarity, wouldn't work. So you have your reversing module, and that's lead to the section in between the two points, which would have under the reverse module. The nice feature with DCC is it doesn't care which side the power is coming from. So you send your train through here with green on the left, blue on the right. The module switch it, so you now got the blue and green the other way around, but the train will still be going the same direction. Whenever I look at layouts, look at them in the planning stage, I always have a few coloured pens so I can actually draw the diagram and then colour, draw colour lines either side so for different polarities of a track. Then it means you can see at glance exactly where about your problem is. Now this one is roughly what I'm going to be using for Garden Railway. So I have already planned in the reversing module but I'll do the same trick as I've done before. So I'll mark the greens. So the inner loop is no problem. I'll mark the blue. And again, no problem. But I then start to mark the other line. So blue will feed in to a green. And the green will feed in to a blue. So I have already planned for this. I'm going to be having this section here as a reversing leap. So it's pl planned to be bigger than the longest train I'm going to run. We're actually looking at a six foot piece of track t just there to hold uh, the largest locals I have. So it's always easier to plan in, on paper what's going on. So, in conclusion for this video, make sure to always draw your plans and have colour pens to mark which side is which. As you can see, it's easy to do. The other thing you need to make sure to do is one reversing module per piece of track. So, if you had this as a double track, you would need two reversing modules as you might have trains in different positions. Well, I hope you have found this video useful. Make sure to share, like, subscribe and comment. Thank you for your time, Richard.